Well, we don't feel like we're strangers. Felt like we've been here for a very friendly church, and uh, there's a place now, uh, faces. I pray by faces, by not by names, but I mean that. I'm not just saying that. Uh, God's here. And uh, when we were here the first Wednesday and heard the men pray, I told Jeannie, I said, this would be the church we would attend if we lived here. So uh, uh, hard to find genuineness in such a world that's full of uh, show, showmanship and showiness. And uh, God's here. met a lady today who said that they're praying. And I told her, I said, ma'am, don't stop because you can tell. And uh, you can tell. And uh, I'm not real old at this, but I've been at it long enough. Uh, to know sometimes where God likes to sit. And uh, we're living in difficult days, uh, but don't give in. Uh, Exodus chapter 33, and thank you, Pastor. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in contact with you. Um, pray for your meeting, and I appreciate uh, his humbleness and kindness to me and my family. Exodus chapter 33. I like to look at uh, people's lives in the scriptures and uh, uh, when you look at their lives and you, you see a lot of similarities in your own life when you're glancing through them and uh, you know I don't get too critical because I look in the mirror a lot and when you look at the life of these people you just laugh and think boy thank God for his grace Amen. but I want to look tonight in the life of Moses so let's let's read the word of God uh, let's stand Exodus chapter 33 verse 9 and the Bible says and it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle that uh, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses and all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and worshiped every man in his tent door and the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend and he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. <laughs> Smart, wasn't he? <laughs> he wanted to get in where it was all happening. And Moses, verse 12, and Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee. And I will give thee rest. Amen. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. <laughs> I love that, don't you? <laughs> God knows her name tonight. He knows right where we're at. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by, and I will take away my hand. And thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Father, 
It's good to be able to call upon you again today. And Lord, we are in desperate need tonight of your presence with us to unveil the scriptures and give us what we need tonight. I pray, Lord, that all of the glory, uh, Lord, and all of the honor, Lord, would be pointed toward you tonight. Lord, for who you are and what you've done. And Father, we'll thank you and praise you for it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We're looking tonight at a glimpse of the life of Moses. Uh, Moses was the uh, selected one to take God's people out of the bondage of Israel uh, to the promised land where they would eat from uh, uh, gardens that they did not plant and drink from wells that they did not uh, dig. And Moses was just trying to do the best that Moses could do to obey the Lord. Uh, but Moses found himself in a difficult place much like uh, you and I tonight. God has left us here uh, to do his will and his service and most of us tonight are just trying to do what God has asked us to do by telling those that that Christ died for sinners and that there is there is a way of escape and we're to stand as trophies of God's grace but Moses was in the same predicament that you and I are you could put yourself where Moses was but Moses found himself in a disappointing time. Uh, Moses there in verse uh, uh, th uh, 12, you can read it there with me. Moses said unto the Lord, See, see, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people. And uh, he, he's telling the Lord that things aren't working out like he thought they should have. Because if you read Exodus 32, you'll find out that Moses uh, went up and got a 10-point outline from God. Uh, it was the 10-point outline that everybody knows. It's the Ten Commandments. And while Moses, the man of God, was up there getting instructions from God, uh, the, the crowd down there where he was trying to bring, the crowd down there he was trying to influence was beginning to make a golden calf and they begin to construct it and praise the golden calf for their release of the bondage. And Moses come down there and threw down uh, the Ten Commandments. It was a disappointing time uh, for Moses. Moses thought surely he would be someplace else by now. Uh, Moses thought for sure by now they ought to reach the promised land. Uh, Moses thought surely by now all of them people he was taking out somehow would have found their way to honor God. Disappointing time for Moses. You ever been in a disappointing time? time? You ever th come to the place where you thought things uh, should have turned out different? That's where Moses is tonight. Uh, Moses just kind of felt like everything he had done was in vain. I tell you, if you ever get there, neighbor, you'll get close to God. You ever get to where Moses was, where he was disappointed? I think disappointments come because God uh, got to wake us up every now and then. Amen. And he, we got this uh, ideas in our heads that we think we should do this or go there. And God just, uh, uh, you start working against God, there will be disappointing times. And Moses found himself in a disappointing time. It was a dark time for Moses. I mean, the world in which Moses was living in was dark and evil. I mean, I heard the preacher talk about the government tonight. I'll be honest with you, brother, it's bad. But I'll tell you, our whole world is in a decay. I mean, our whole world. I mean, you go out into churches tonight, and there's more world in the church. And a church in the world, you can't tell the two apart. You don't know which way's up or down. We're living tonight in dark days. I was sitting there at my in-laws and uh, watching the news about that fellow that cut up that little baby, delivered baby. And I thought, Lord have mercy and I had a hard time asking God to bless our nation after that nonsense God's not going to bless a nation that's killing innocent children tonight I mean I know God loves us and his grace is uh, far beyond any sin but I tell you tonight uh, we're living in dark times and Moses kind of felt like he was the only one uh, standing for truth you ever get there I'm from Michigan what I mean by that is, is everybody keeps doing this where are you from I said I ain't going to do it you know they, they get you to go over here over there but we're way up there neighbor and I got news for you it's dark there too 
I mean, it's dark everywhere. People trying to take methamphetamines and drugs and alcohol just to try to numb the reality of our wicked world. Moses was in a dark time. I'll tell you tonight, if you don't think it's dark out there, your eyes are shut. Uh, your head's in the sand. And I mean, you need to wake up to the reality that our world needs someone to tell them about the hope that's in Christ Jesus. Moses was in a dark time. He felt like he was the only one. Felt like he was the only one. Look at verse 15, if you would, tonight. Uh, there in verse 15 of Exodus 33, it says, And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up. I think I heard that prayer on Wednesday night when someone said, Lord, just open our eyes and give us revival. I'll tell you, Moses was saying, Lord, Lord if we're not going with us, we're not going anywhere. Amen. Lord, if we're not going to go through, we're not going to just have meeting. Amen. Lord, if you're, gonna, you're not going to go with us, don't give us meeting. That's where Moses was. He was in a dark time, but it was also a doubting time. I knew it would get quiet right there, but let's face the facts. If you've ever lived any length of time and are honest with yourself, sometimes you got to throw your hands up and say, God, are you even there? Are you listening to me? Lord, I mean, do you even know my address? That's what Moses was asking. If you look there, he said, where are they? See, you said to take these people up. Look in verse 12. Some of you look like you don't believe me. He said there in verse 12, and Moses said unto the Lord, see, Anybody's wife ever say that to him? See, I told you, huh? You go on a trip, she'll you hear that, amen? That's what Moses was saying. See, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. He said, you said you know me by name. We got these people out here. You didn't tell me who's going to send. I mean, this was a doubting time for Moses. If you don't believe me yet, take a look a little bit farther in verse 13. He says, now therefore I pray thee if... Anytime you use that two-lettered word, amen, you're a doubting. He said, if. He said, if I have found grace in thy sight. If I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way. I'll tell you, Moses was, his, Moses was in a doubting time of his life. He said, Lord, I don't even know if you know who I am. I don't even know if you care about where I'm going. I'll tell you, Moses was, with, Moses was having a difficult time in his life. And I'll tell you, if you live for Jesus for any length of time you'll have, you, God will bring you to this place. I heard a preacher say not too long ago, everybody wants to have a cross to carry, but you got to get to the Garden of Gethsemane first, amen? And you'll have to go through the Garden of Gethsemane before you get to Calvary, amen? I'll tell you tonight, this was a dark time. This was a doubting time. This was a, this was a, uh, uh, just a, a, a disappointing time for Moses. But tonight I want to preach from verse 21. Moses and the Lord were beginning to talk and the Lord was trying to reassure him that he knew him by name. He was trying to reassure Moses that this was all part of the plan and, and not to fret and stew. And I'll tell you, verse 21 has done more for me in my life than any verse I can think of. And God tells there in verse 21, let's read it together. And the Lord said unto Moses, said, uh, said, Behold, there is a place by me. There's a place by me. I'll tell you tonight, I want to preach for just a little while on there's a place by me. Number one, there's a place by me where the weary can get rest. I mean, if you're getting weary in the battle, if you're getting tired of the battle, friend, I tell you, there, there ain't but one place to get a drink. There ain't but one place uh, for a, a weary a soldier to get re-strengthened. And that's right at the feet of God Almighty. There's a place been cleared off for you and I to get that strength that we can get going for another day. And I'll tell you the truth, neighbor, if you wait any length of time to get your uh, weariness restored, you've waited too long. Amen. I tell you, I find myself not going day by day. It seems moment by moment. Boy, I got to get to that place and say, God, I tell you, we are living in a wicked world. And the Lord just pearls me up under his arm and whispers those sweet nothings. Amen. In my ear. And it gives me courage to go one more day. I tell you, people throwing in the towel. Uh, people quitting on God, turning their back just like the children of Israel. But I tell you, the reason they're doing it isn't because they ain't the children of God. It's because 
because they didn't get to that place that God told them that he cleared off for them. I tell you, there's a place by me where the weary can get rest. Jesus told those disciples in John chapter 16 and verse 33, he said, in the world ye shall have tribulation. I was preaching along this line one time, and someone came up to me and says, You know, preacher, I just don't have that kind of problem that you got. I don't have that kind of trouble you got. I thought to myself, I looked at him and I said, Son, I know exactly where you're living. You're living down at the casino, amen. Uh, I mean, you're living down there where they're, where they're serving the liquor, and, and you, ain't got, you ain't got one bit of wrestling in you because you're just going along with the flow of life, amen. I wish I could stand here tonight and tell you that God doesn't hold accountability to our sin. But that wouldn't be the truth. Amen. God's a watching where we're going. And it isn't difficulty. The Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. This is a wrestling match we're in tonight. I'll tell you, Jacob, Jacob wrestled. Uh, Jacob knew what it was. Jacob wanted something bigger. And Moses wanted something bigger than what he had. I tell you, there's a place by God. Tonight, where the weary can get rest. Amen. I tell you tonight, are you weary? I tell you, are you, how long has it been since you and God just talked face to face? How long has it been when you could actually know when you got up off your knees that you communicated with God and you and God were on the same page? I tell you, Moses was, wasn't there. Moses came in a part of his life where he said, I'm not leaving until you bless me. He said, Lord, I'll tell you right now, we're not, I'm not getting up from this place. We're not going any farther until you tell me. And the Lord strengthened him that day. Amen. There's a place by me where the wanderer can find his way. Watch in verse 13. Moses says, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way. You're looking at a preacher tonight that knows that God has created every individual for a purpose His. Amen. I believe tonight that God has a perfect plan for every individual. And the only way you're going to get that plan isn't by mustering it up. It isn't by trying to strategically plan your life. It's by getting with God. God showing you His map and you getting in it. Amen. And I've got news for you, neighbor. Yours and mine are different. Amen. You're going to reach people that I can't reach. And you're going to go places that I cannot go. And I'm going to go places that you can't go. That's the way God designed it. God don't have people sitting on the sidelines. And when you retire, we put flowers on you. Amen. I mean, God just keeps us always busy. Moses told the Lord, he said, I don't know which way to go. I'm confused, God. You told me to bring these people out of here. And I tell you, it looks like I'm not doing a good job. And God said, Moses, just get to this place. Stand right here. And I'll tell you, I'll show you the way to go. I'll tell you tonight, if you don't know which way it is, just get with God. Get with God. I'll tell you, I wouldn't get up. One time I was in a meeting in Ohio, and uh, I was the preacher. And I'll tell you, God broke me. I mean, I, I got going in there. I got up off my uh, pew. I, I mean, I, you know how preachers get. A, a big shot preacher is a preacher that gets 20 miles away from where he's brought up. Amen? I mean, you know, you wear every bit of it. you got to work it all up. And Well, I tell you, I got to the Lord just heavy on me. And I got to that altar, and man, I cried. I told the Lord, I'm not getting up till you. I mean, literally. I told the Lord, I'm not going to get up till you speak to me. Amen. And boy, I tell you, they went on with a service. And they, they didn't know what to do. They sang 45 specials, and pretty soon they just shut her down and went to lunch. And they put their arm around me. I said, just leave me alone. I said, I got to hear from God. And I'll tell you, I wouldn't trade that for all the money in the world. If you don't believe me, trust me, friend. And I'll tell you, God whispered in my ear and put in my heart exactly what he wanted out of my life. Boy, I got up out of that thing and I never preached the same sense. I knew exactly what God, there's a confidence with that neighbor. You know what God wants you to do. And you ain't got to be a preacher, a Sunday school teacher. God's got people working a lot more than just behind this pulpit. Can I get an amen there? There's a lot more work to be done than sitting behind some desk uh, in a suit and a tie. And I thank God for that office. But I tell you, a lot more work's being done out there. Amen. Uh, trying to put your arm around some lost, hell-bent sinner. That's where the ministry is. And I'll tell you tonight, Moses said, you know what? I just need to know which way to go. And the Lord tells Moses, there's a place by me. You need direction? Just get with me. I'll tell you tonight, there's a place by me where the weeper can find a shoulder. I tell you, I don't know if you're anything. I, I don't know. There's people different. 
But you know, sometimes I just like to get with God and tell Him everything. You know what I'm talking about? I know this isn't deep, but I'm telling you the truth tonight. All this, beside, I've heard all the praying. Amen. I mean, sometimes I, I, I'll tell you Wednesday night, you guys got some prayers in here. Now, and I guess unless they're real good at pretending, I'll tell you the truth, man, I was refreshed. You could have prayed. I mean, the message was wonderful, but I'll tell you the truth. It's hard to find folks that want to get a hold of God. And I'll tell you, man, I, there's times, though, that I skip the prayer meeting with the men because I want to get with God. I mean, I'm tired of all the facades and trying to say all the right words. I just want to tell the Lord what's on my heart, amen? I want to get past all that nonsense and get put down the mask, amen? And say, God, I've got news for you. This was a bad day today. I mean, I wanted to run that old lady off the road. I wanted to poke that guy in the eye. I mean, Lord, I was in the flesh two or three times today. I tell you, Lord, I'm just sick and tired of this place. And, you know, all this, you try to pretend with God, he knows your heart. I mean, it's good just to get with God someplace and shut the closet door and tell God what's on your heart. That's what Moses did. Moses said, I need a shoulder. Can I cry on your shoulder? I tell you, God's there awaiting. He's waiting for all of us. And I'll tell you, we can lay on his shoulder and we can tell him every deep thing we'd never tell anybody else. And God just forget it all, put it behind his back and just go on. Amen. And there's strength and power. There's strength and power in giving that stuff to God. You want deliverance, neighbor? It ain't through reading good books. There's only one good book, amen, that'll deliver you from anything. It's getting with God and telling God how much you love him and how worthless you are. Now, you, let me tell you something. I don't think you're worthless, but I'll tell you, it's good to sit down there and tell God, Lord, I'll tell you, without you, I can do nothing. I mean, Lord, without you there, I, I'm going to be falling flat on my face. Lord, I don't want to live my Christian life. i got a friend up in Canada. That's a Yankee. Amen. And he is. Man, that guy is about as... But you know, he's a great preacher. He always, he'll ask me, he said, Brother Jones, who's living your Christian life? You? You and God? He said, if it's, if it's you and God, you're all messed up. He said, why don't you just go ahead and let him live it for you. Amen? And I tell you, I find out when I say, Lord, I can't do it. The Lord steps in there and says, I'll help you. I'll tell you, he does a good job of living the Christian life. I'll tell you, there's a place tonight where you can get strength. There's a place tonight where you don't have to throw in the towel. There's a place tonight where you can find a way and get purpose for your life. Amen. There's a place tonight where you can find a shoulder and lean on the Lord for a while and just tell God your troubles. But to, for just a little bit longer tonight, if you don't mind, I want to look at that place. Can we look at that place for just a little bit? Look here in verse 21. It says, And the Lord said, Behold, there's a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. <laughs> I mean, I know what rock they're talking about, amen. I'm talking about the chief cornerstone. Tonight, boy, I tell you tonight, if you're standing on anything other than Jesus Christ, it's all sinking sand, amen. The Lord said, if you're going to stand by me, you're going to stand on the rock, amen. The rock. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, Paul the apostle told that church at Corinth, he said, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock, that that flow followed them and that rock was Christ. Amen. Hey, I got news for you tonight. It's a steady rock. It's a steady rock. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He ain't going to move for no place. When you find Christ, you find God. Amen. I'm not looking for God. Amen. He found me. This I tell you this morning when we sang that song, that's the truth. God called out my name. And I'll tell you right now, I just couldn't say no. Amen. I mean, I don't know about you, but with that, that was just a, a deal that couldn't be refused. Amen. I was a sinner. He was the Savior. And boy, I tell you, when he called my name, I hope you can remember that time. Amen. I said, I said, yes, I think I'll take that. Amen. But I've got news for you tonight. He's steady. He ain't gonna, he ain't gonna throw you away. He told that there in the gospels, he said, whosoever cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. He's a steady rock. 
Amen. Notice though, would you, well, I remember reading a story one time. Uh, it was a pretty good story. I think this is a story I read. I might have stole this from somebody else. I'm not sure, but you know how illustrations are. You're hoping you got, you read this one, but I either stole it or I read it. All right. I can't either. Either way, it's, it's an illustration that fits, but there was a grandpa who was a fisherman. He was off on the uh, coast out there in California where all the fruits and nuts are. Amen. And uh, they was out there fishing and grandson wanted to go fishing with grandpa. He's never been out there. And he said, come on in. He says, you can go fishing. And they took him out there and these fish were uh, only in the bay at certain times. And that's what they made their living with. And they got in there and, and uh, done some turning around with their nets or lines or whatever they're doing. And, and the boy started to get sick. I mean, real bad seasick. I mean, throwing up and couldn't help get his legs from underneath him. And he said, Grandpa, I gotta, you got to stop this thing. I'm going to die. I, I can't take this. And he said, well, we can't stop fishing, boy. I'll tell you, this is how we make our money. And we got to get it in there while the times are thing. He said, well, can you just put me over there on the rock? And boy, I tell you, he pulled over there. And that little boy stepped over there and thought, yeah, this is nice. Amen. I mean, this is stable ground. Uh, we're not moving any longer. And boy, they got to fishing and went around this way in that way and all of a sudden one of them storms like you got in Florida uh, whipped up there one of them real quick ones and boy I tell you thundered and lightning and grandpa was trying to rush back to the rock where he put his boy at and uh, he got in there and uh, the storm had passed through and the little boy jumped in the boat he said boy I'm sorry he said we got way over there and that storm come in there he said I'm sorry were you scared he said oh, I was terrified he said, man, well, how was it? He said, boy, the thunder was a crashing and lightning. He said, a rain. He said, it was just terrible. He said, but you know what, Grandpa? He said, the rock never moved. Amen. I got news for you tonight. It may get rocky. It may get rolly. But the rock that sits by God, amen, will never move. It's a steady rock. Amen. It's a single rock. He didn't say rocks. He said rock. There's a place by me and thou shalt stand upon a rock. I tell you, you're looking at a preacher that only believes Jesus. Amen. Yeah, I, I was driving here tonight and uh, there was a bunch of traffic blocked up and I glanced over and saw one of these SUVs and it said tolerance. You ever see those bumper stickers? Where they want me to, you know, believe, uh, they want me to go ahead and give room for Buddha and give room for all of that other nonsense. I don't even know them all. I mean, there's just so many of them. I got news for you, but there ain't no room for anybody but Christ. Amen. And one day, and one day when he comes splitting through them clouds, amen. One day when he comes over here to take over, amen. Ain't going to be no tolerance then, amen. It'll all be him. He'll reign and rule just like he's doing tonight. I got news for you tonight. He's still on the throne. There ain't no administration, bless God. There ain't no no wicked sin is going to change his authority. Let me tell you something tonight. He'll always be Lord. He's ruling and reigning in this country. And he doesn't get worried. He doesn't wring his hands. He doesn't even get sweaty. He don't lose sleep and he doesn't watch Oprah. Amen. He's got it all under control tonight. Every last bit of it. He knows the beginning from the end. It's a single rock. But I'll tell you tonight, it's a sizable rock. There's room for you tonight. There's room for you tonight. I tell you, there's a place tonight where all of us can get restored. There's a place tonight where you can have all of your past erased. Look here. You see this? God said He's taken my sin and put it behind His back. And it don't matter which way I turn. He doesn't see a bit of it. I tell you, there's something about that. There's something about having all them sins erased. But you got to get to the rock. Amen. I tell you tonight, there's something about knowing your purpose in life, but you got to get to the rock. Amen. Let me tell you tonight, God sent me here all the way from Michigan right. to tell you this. There's a place by God. Yes. There's a place Amen. by God. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Why don't we stand to our feet tonight? I don't preach to get people to the altar, but I'll tell you this much tonight. If you believe there's a God in heaven and He's waiting to hear from you, you ought to step out of your seat. If you're here tonight and you're lost without Jesus, and I tell you, don't wait no longer. Amen. Why don't you lay down the mask and quit pretending and get you Amen. something real? Amen. Something that take you on the next day as the piano player begins to come, our pastor's coming.